Hey, are you looking for the perfect gift for the RV traveler in your life? Or maybe looking for a gift for yourself? I have something for you. Blair and I have been members of Harvest Hosts since we've been RVing. And we've been thoroughly impressed with the myriad of locations and places we've stayed and the wonderful humans we have get to meet along the way doing that. Uh, but right now, I'm happy to announce that uh, our partnership with them is giving all new members a 30% off for their first year membership. So if you're RVing and you're not yet a Harvest Host member, you can use this code and get 30% off for your first year of a membership. If you are not an RVer at all, but you have someone in your life who is, you can give them this gift this holiday season. Sale starts on November 21st and goes through the end of the calendar year. Go down to the link below in the video description and you'll find a link to Harvest Host. When you click on that link and you go to check out, use the code FRIENDS30 and you can get 30% off your first year of membership with Harvest Host and giving you access to 4,000 plus locations around the country from farms to wineries to breweries to churches to farmers markets to parking lots. I mean, we stayed in all sorts of awesome places using Harvest Host. So don't delay, get it now. Sometimes I look around and wonder why we are here, you wrapped in life. And if there's others, if there ever was, peering back high above. And if they tried to capture you in light, reflecting mirrors in the night. Tried to reach you through a telescope. They'll never We're getting ready to get on the road this morning again, and it's, um, I think it's 20 degrees outside, so we're going to blow out the water lines. I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing you need to do is open your low point drains. In this particular model, our low point drains are located here under the booth seat for the, the kitchen table. But if you open up all the the faucet in the kitchen, the faucet in the shower, the faucet in the um, the sink faucet in the bathroom, and then the toilet, and then open your low point drains, most of the water will come out. But we hook up our via air air compressor to our city water inlet and blow everything out. Let's see how it works. Put it about halfway between hot and cold. Let some water flow. So I was going to do the same for the shower. And then our low point drains are right in here. Hot and cold line, low point drain. So they're both open now. Sink is on. My air compressor here. And my hose. This hose already has the city water inlet on it. You can see where some of the water came out of the low point drains under there. Hook up the air compressor to the battery. It is here. And turn it on. So what we'll do is we'll continue blowing all the lines out until mo the water's gone. And then the best way to do it with the air compressor is to do one spigot at a time, hot or cold, until all the water, and until nothing but air is coming out of that one spigot. And do the same for your low point drains, the same for your outside shower, the same for your water heater, uh, your inside shower, your toilet, bathroom sink, hot and cold. So do every lever twice through individually, and then you will have blown all the water out of your lines. If you're not aware, the water heater, if you have the on-demand water heater, this is where you pull, and water will come out of this spigot up here. So it's all blown out now, and we leave every spigot that we can open. So we leave our low point drains open, front sink, rear sink, shower valve open, and we turn off the water heater. There's a little switch right here to turn the power to it off and drain it out as well. 
temperatures. This way it doesn't try to light nothing. So if you don't know, your water heater has a temperature sensor in it that's, if it's below, I think 37 degrees or 36 degrees, it flames up for a moment. So I don't want it to flame with no water inside of it. So I've turned the power to it off. We leave all of them open and we drive to where we're going and then repressurize the whole system. It's very simple. You can also use antifreeze to do this exact same process. Um, I, I'm not opposed to antifreeze in any way, shape, fashion, or form. I just prefer to do it with air because it's a temporary thing. If we were storing our rig for some weeks or months on end, I would 100% use antifreeze. Hi friends, welcome to this very chilly morning. It's 18 degrees outside right now. And I want to talk about moisture control inside your rig. You can see on these windows here, maybe you can see, no, I'll do a close up, they're foggy. I just made coffee. It's pretty early in the morning. Typically these windows up here are the worst ones. So during the winter time, we don't even close the shades because they will accumulate moisture on the inside of them. And it typically freezes. And then I have a hard time getting it off in the mornings. But this window, we leave it up because there's a window down here that also has the same thing but i have this little battery powered fan right here i turn it on in the mornings and let it blow just vent some air through the windows like this because we do have our dehumidifier back there peppers found her burrito but we have a dehumidifier that runs all the time and it pulls a large bit of the moisture out of the air but not all of it so you can see these windows here beside us foggy i've just raised up the glass to let some air in there moisture in the window there the big one sometimes is our bathroom window so i have to get that little fan in here and blow some more blow some air through here to let some of this clean out you can also open up your leak vent in the bathroom to pull some of the air out but the main point i want to make is when you're winter camping it doesn't matter what window it is they all have moisture on the inside of them if you've had Outside air, glass, inside air, curtain, inside air, warm. Because you have to open up everything daily and let that air flow through those windows. Otherwise, the moisture stays trapped. You know, any kind of fan blowing, circulating air around is fine. Sometimes you might need to open up your cabinets to let, you know, air flow back behind to your water lines and things like that. But typically, your gas furnace is plenty for keeping uh, every pipe warm, including your tanks. The dump valve, a whole nother story. Sometimes we have to get out a hair dryer uh, to, to thaw it out to be able to dump our tanks in the winter time. Back to moisture control, I always, we have these hanging bags. We, we put them in the closets. We hang them in the bathroom. We hang them, you know, everywhere else. Anytime we're cooking, we have the range hood on. Anytime we're showering, we have the fan on up there and if we have quite a few people in here and it's cold like this and we want to keep it open we'll open up the fantastic fan i don't need to open it all the way i just need to open it just a little bit to a little bit of a little bit of the moisture come out and that typically keeps everything good inside this rig for winter time camping so these hanging bags are from damp rid as a brand we also have a damp rid bucket in our outside storage bin here and back at the back in the bedroom and as long as you have these hanging in your closets and you know a damp red bucket in those places all around typically moisture inside the rig is not that big a deal but ventilation is key so crack a window open open up your fantastic fan on your roof or open up the bathroom or the shower vent and let some of the moisture out if you read the owner's manual of your rig it's going to tell you in the general sections about breathing and moisture control it's like a page and a half worth of text on controlling moisture in the rig because it is a very serious thing and it says a family of four you know cooking cleaning showering etc can accumulate about three gallons of water in the vapor air a day so that's quite a bit of moisture to get out of the air so it's very important that you keep it down because it keeps mold down and it keeps you from having issues in your rig so vent it out and get all the moisture down i received an email about a month ago from this company called unique they sell this product on amazon and they have their own store uh, asking if i'd like to try out the product so i'm going to try it out they're in the line of duty which i think is hilarious 
these are your standard drop-in tank digest. This is a tank cleaner and this is a toilet cleaner. None of these have harsh chemicals or are bad for the environment, which I think is a really cool thing. They're all made in um, okay, the town in Colorado. I can't remember. Arvita, maybe. Um, anyway, toilet cleaner. So you would dump this in your toilet, let it sit for a while, brush your toilet, let it sit there because the bacteria, it creates bacteria, which eats the, the toilet dirtiness, I guess. And then you flush it down your toilet. When people use harsh chemicals like bleach, it will deteriorate the rubber seal for your ball valve in your toilet, and over time it would uh, start leaking. So if you have a trailer that's a couple years old and you notice that water never stays in your bowl, that's probably why, because someone or you have used harsh chemicals in cleaning your toilet, and that seal has deteriorated. Worse yet, what you wouldn't even really know is the seal where the toilet connects to the floor. There's a big rubber seal there, too. If that thing goes bad, Life is not good in any way. So use a not harsh chemical cleaner if you can find one. And this is one brand. I have not used this yet. We're going to put some in the tanks tonight because we're cleaning the tanks. Uh, so I'll let you know how this goes. Tank cleaner. So this entire bottle will be dropped in. And it's good for uh, 40 gallons of tank, wherever you're going to use it in. But it says fill your black tank with a couple gallons of water, um, preferably hot and dump this entire thing down inside your holding tank. It says driving around is not required, but is preferred because it will get over the entire tank. And then you let it sit for preferably 12 hours before you dump something into it. So, And then you have your standard uh, drop-in pods, as you've probably seen. But you can use this in your gray tank and your black tank. So what it would be is I'd take the sink up here, the kitchen sink, fill it full of hot water, Drop this pod in there, let it dissolve, and then drain it. And the same for your toilet. Um, fill your toilet up all the way, drop the pod in there, let it dissolve in, and then dump this in your toilet. So I'm going to try these tonight and um, see what I think about it. So more to follow as I learn. So I use the unique tank treatment, toilet cleaner, and uh, desanitizer. I used all three products. D dumping the little pods in the sink and dissolving in hot water in the shower and hot water or the bathroom sink and hot water because they all go to the gray tank doesn't really matter where you put it but I've done one cube into each of those three spots mainly so I can clean the pipes out that connect those three things to the gray water tank I also did it in the toilet and then on our last trip I, I drained all the tank and I poured that entire bottle of unique cleaner into the black tank and let it sit for 12 hours before we use it again and dumped it and I was pleasantly surprised with the lack of odor from the tank and I know this is gross but I pushed the foot pedal down to open up the tank and I sat there with my face over the toilet bowl for a moment to see if I had any odors coming out because typically you do if you've dumped your tanks ever or been around RVs for a while I mean it's a straight pipe to a sewer holding tank so it does smell um, when that ball valve is open but I was pleasantly surprised that I had no smell very thankful for that so I will continue using the unique product uh, as we go forward so I think it's a good thing it has a brand approval and you can find your very own down in the links below out with the old in with the new so I've had this hose work for I don't even know how many years five years probably and it's it's really kept up well to be always in the sun always outside winter summer spring fall uh, and full-time use and it gets packed up and moved quite a bit but I finally decided to upgrade I used this model for many years because it was pretty cheap and very effective but I found something shiny and I like shiny things is what I like to say so I got the Camco shiny model so this is the 15 foot version. It comes with a little handle on the front and the back side. And you can expand it out to 15 feet. And it just sets the hose right in the top here. And it's pretty nice. My favorite thing is it matches my shiny object behind me there. But two, it's pretty tall. So depending on the airstream you have, getting your hose to seat in this tallest part could be problematic. 
this one has a lift kit on it, so I don't think it'll be that big a deal, but some of the airstreams are pretty low, and it sits pretty low, so I'm going to show you what this one looks like. But it comes with these little clear plastic straps and a Camco. You need to do a better job with these instructions because it's not very clear. It says slide metal clips on the sewer hose support legs with the open end of each hook facing downwards. Clips should be placed just below the bend in the supports aluminum legs. Now, there's no photo, so it doesn't even show what what these things are for, but they're actually to support the hose. And the hose sitting here, it straps across the hose like that. So these are supposed to go at both ends and in the middle of your deal here, right below the bend is what it meant. So this straps to here, pulls across your hose, straps on the other side. I will tell you that these are very thick rubber, but the metal tabs are very sharp metal, and sometimes those two things don't match. So putting them on here could be problematic. Time will tell. I have a hose support brackets on. I have my three support clips, which I'm going to try to attach now. All right, got all those on there. Let's go set it up. I forgot to mention it comes with this very handy Velcro travel strap. So when you squeeze this thing back together, you put your travel strap in here, pop it on, tighten it down, and then your rig doesn't fly apart. So let's remove that and now go install it. So you can already see my dump station is right here. This particular thing does not fit under there. The and this has a three inch lift kit on it, so it's three inches taller than what it would normally be. So, how do I use this? It'll stretch out to 15 feet, which is what I need, but I have to put it back behind. I can't leave it out. It's fully extended. Now, once it gets fully extended, it lays down much more. So, that's an option. Hose is on, and because of the height of this rear piece, I need to move this hose support lanyard up some. So I won't put it on the very end, I'll put it somewhere close to the end so it will reach. These hose support plastic straps are nice. I don't think they're completely necessary. And I think it should be made of something other than this rubber against this metal because the metal tabs are very, very close. And very sharp for that little piece of plastic. But it does hold it together well. So these are the little metal clips that come with the thing and you slide these on and this rubber piece goes over that. So the diameter here to here is a little bit out. So you really need to take some pliers and open this up some so you can get this in there easily. But maybe a string or something because the sun beating on this every day will oxidize it and dry, dry rot it and eventually crack. So there's got to be a better method than this. but. It'll work for now. Final thought, it kicks the pants off of this thing. Very sturdy, it seems to hold very well. It looks very good, it looks very clean compared to the plastic ones. And so time will tell. That's my initial review. If you'd like to get your own, click on the link below, get your own. Camco, thanks for making awesome products for our RVs and uh, we appreciate all the things that we use from you. One of the maintenance tip I wanna make real quick is on the fantastic fan here. Uh, and I'll zoom in so you can watch this up close, but most folks are afraid to, and should be kind of nervous to, to climb up on the roof. And I use 303 for my seals. So my window seals, door seals, the rubber latches on the front window guard, 
and various other rubber things on the rig, I use 303, which is what Airstream recommends, giving them a long life. Same goes for the seal up here, but I'm happy to climb up on my roof because I'm comfortable to do it and I have the equipment to get up there. But if you're not comfortable to do that, or you are don't have the ladder and equipment to get up there, or you're not physically able to do that, I have a way to keep the seal of your Fantastic Fan lubricated, staying right here inside the rig. If you've used the Fantastic Fan in any time, just like the windows, it sticks on occasion. You have to help it out to get it open. But here's how you do it. You got to take the screen out first, which is pretty easy. There's a lip on the screen, and it pops down. So your lip looks like that. And you can pop that down. Pretty easy to pop down and get up. You can also clean the screen that way too. And then there's a screw right here in the very center of this. Now I have to hold the fan itself, hold the fan blades to take the screw out. Remove the screw and I can pull the fan blades straight down. Very simple. Now I take my 303 wipe. They make a spray also, but I take my 303 wipe and I clean all the way around my rubber steel there. I just closed it on myself because I touched the rain sensor with my moist rag. So I gotta let that dry and then I can open it back up. All right, I'm back on now. Things to consider before you open this, make sure the big fan button off, it says on off, make sure that button is turned off. Uh, fan is in, I always tell people don't ever put the fan in zero, the speed sensor in zero, because nothing works once it's in zero. So one, two, or three is where it is. But once the fan blade, once this is turned off, it's not an issue. The fan's not gonna work anyway. Uh, but look around the area, inspect the area, clean out, whatever thing with a rag, and then continue your seal lubrication. Now putting it back together, inside of here there's a little flat spot and you got to go up here to the motor part and find the flat spot on that. Line those two things up. Slide the fan back on. Put your screw back in. Tighten the screw down. Hold the fan blades and just give it a little tight on there. While you got that up there, you may want to, or while you've got the fan blades in, but the screen off, clean your fan blades some, because they get dirty too. And now that we're down there, we put the screen back in. And the screen can go really any kind of direction. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that the little loop right here, the little rounded part, is accessible and not right by a button that you need. I, kind of, I like to put mine right in the middle. Close my fan, and that's all. I have one uh, couple maintenance upgrades we've been doing lately, but I, I realized my as I'm in my hall closet here, the shelf, the back of the shelf was sagging just a hair, and this is the only brace is this one piece of wood right here. But I took a piece of aluminum and I riveted it to the wall and then put it underneath the shelf to give that back side of that shelf a little bit more stability. Works like a champ. I wish Airstream would do this on their own.